Hello, I'm Ramey. And I'm Beth. Welcome. This is Brother Knows Quest, the podcast where I, your host, introduce my sister, Beth, to the wonderful world of tabletop role-playing games. You don't have a clue what we're talking about today, do you? Mm-mm. Okay, well. The Stars of Fire. Yes, it's Monty Cook's The Stars Are Fire. It's their... Oh, our fire. <laughs> didn't... I, I don't know if I said that or not. I don't know. I didn't notice it. Mm-hmm. It is a space setting for Cypher System. So if you like Star Wars, a little bit of it could work for that. Firefly or Star Trek, of course. Stargate. You could probably use Stargate. Or just any kind of space thing. But the setting is what's so cool. Now, this is a weird one. It doesn't really have many character options. It tells you the ones you can use from the core book, but it doesn't really have many new ones. Anything worth mentioning? It also kind of covers the uh, rules and everything, of course, that you could use for these settings, as well as different ideas for settings and how to handle different tech levels. It'd be hard to handle as a person because we don't know really what's coming in the future, you know? It has a bunch of useful information. But in the setting itself, Durevel, R-E-V-E-L, Revel, humans have colonized the solar system and a little bit beyond. A couple centuries past the incident that almost snuffed us out, we're on the cusps of the 24th century. Supermassive space stations called spirals, they call them that because they spin to keep artificial gravity going, mm-hmm. host millions of residents, each featuring cutting edge technology and the latest fashions of all things. It's built and governed and separate by five megacorps, the big five, they call them. Mm-hmm. They take care of all the trade and manufacturing throughout the solar system. Spacecraft are constantly coming and going from all that. Luna 1, a sprawling dominion of the doomed moon base, prospers under the beneficent rule of a strong AI, yeah, called Anaximedar, A-N-A-X-I-M-A-N-D-E-R. Mm. I have no idea. He uh, oversees uh, at least in most aspects of life in some way or another on the moon. He does, uh, a lot of people say he sticks his nose into places they don't belong. As an AI, I'm sure you get very curious. Mars is homestead of the freeholds. They are made independent of each other. One of the most important is called the Cynix Ranch. C-I-X-I-N, Sixen, Sin, Sixen, all these names. Whose genetically modified crickets provide basic foodstuffs for colonies all across the system. It's a cricket farm mm. on Mars. Mm-hmm. Barsoom City, it's a mining boomtown on Mars. And in the belt, asteroid belt, you have independent trading concerns. Lots of hollowed out asteroids and stuff. Oh. Ah, the Expanse. That's another one of the things I was thinking of every time I read this. The Expanse is uh, mostly taking place in our little solar system here. This show from Amazon. You should watch it. They're constantly, these little uh, trading places in the asteroid belt are constantly uh, under threat of being snapped up by the Big Five. Or from one of the Martian dysphoria might snatch them up and become part of them. There's really no alien life that we know of besides microscopic. We'd have come across that, but no intelligent life. Two conglomerates of the Big Five produced a top-secret propulsion system allowing humans to travel through space at faster-than-light travel, which means we can leave the solar system, but only a a handful of extrasolar colonies were ever established around other stars, and it's still such a new technology and so expensive that nobody outside the Big Five can really have anything to do with it. Mm. Uh, The event that I mentioned almost snuffed out uh, humanity? Mm Mm-hmm. A bizarre discovery of millions of miles of tunnels crisscrossing the moon's core. Artificial tunnels. Old tunnels. Not built by human tunnels. News of this amazing discovery never really reached Earth itself because as soon as the tunnels were discovered, our birth planet went completely dark. No one in the system knows why. No one's willing to say why anyway. But they just the whole planet just went dark. All communications across the entire Earth cut off simultaneously. And dark shrouds of uh, rancid clouds quickly envelop the entire planet, blocking the entire electromagnetic spectrum. We can't see what's going on in this giant, dense cloud where Earth used to be. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? We shouldn't have discovered those tunnels. Of course, angry accusations born of panic and loss flew between and among the spirals, uh, various freeholds of Dystoria, Luna One, um, all those places. All these far-flung worlds, Earth was or has been an indispensable trading partner for most of these places. And all of a sudden, they just disappear. Cooler heads eventually prevailed, and new independent space treaty was uh, hammered out over a couple of months of intense bargaining to make up the difference and keep all these little planets that mostly relied on Earth up and going. (laughs) Uh, The AI on Luna 1 determined that the event to be exactly coincided with the discovery of the tunnels, as we just said. Though not understanding the association, the EI immediately restricted access to the tunnels out of an abundance of caution, calling it a quarantine. 
seems kind of safe to assume that's a good idea. And now the quarantine from the moon also extends to Earth itself. What's, well, the cloud. So the moon's AI and all of its people are just keeping from getting near it. Hmm. Yeah. It's been a decade since this whole thing happened. The, uh, it's called the quiet Earth now. They don't even just call it Earth. The tunnels remain quarantined, Space Force, which is, uh, <laughs> well, in real life, a Space Force, and a failed TV show that I kind of enjoyed, but they have a Space Force here, too. They have satellites and uh, frigates patrol over the area constantly, and they have a few uh, people constantly guarding those tunnels that lead underneath the moon. Kind of weird scenario. People's lifespan in this century, though, thanks to genetic programming and tech, even people with regular access to modern medicine can expect about a century of life. Some people go further and get modifications to keep themselves going. Like I said, genetics or machines, you become cyborg. I mean, why not? Also, um, people usually adopt the name of the apartment complexes where they live, rather than keeping their surname. (coughs) I'm from B11. (laughs) (laughs) But this has been like a short 10-minute episode because it's a very flexible system, and I've told you the basics of all that stuff, but there really isn't anything else to talk about. There's a whole bunch in it for the setting. I think it's really more of an idea to take it something you really like, like I said, The Expanse of Star Wars or Star Trek or something like that, and make your own. The setting is just popped in there as an extra. A lot of these books are like that, but most of them have more in them than this book. So if you could imagine a space setting, unless you think this one sounds cool, but there's a lot of other ones out there. I'd rather play in something like, like I said, The Expanse, which has its own game, but it's a little bit more complicated to play than Cypher System. Or Star Trek. Star Trek's really good, which also has its own game. So does Star Wars. And Firefly. They all have their own game, but Cypher System is about as simple as you're going to find. Does any of that make sense to you? The only spacey thing I really am into is Doctor Who, so. Oh, I don't know how you would do Doctor Who with this one. Yeah. I also have the Doctor Who. Uh, one, I don't like Star Trek. I don't like Star Wars. Um, not that person. So this is clearly not for you. No. Okay. Now we know that. That's all I have to say about it. Since there's no character stuff. It did have some different things like I talked about when it come to creatures, but... Yeah, I seen one that looked like a dinosaur when I was flipping through. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. And I couldn't find anywhere in here where it discussed... And a lot what... of eating flesh seemed to be in there. I mean, everybody eats flesh, apparently. Mostly crickets. Mm. Imagine the whole protein of your diet is nothing but crickets. You can get those chocolate-covered ones. I've had them. Mm. They don't really have a flavor. They're just crunchy. Yeah, so that's a hard pass for you. Well, even when I was flipping through, it just doesn't look like my cup of tea. No, For somebody that likes Star Wars and Star Trek, probably, but I hate that kind of stuff, so. Most of the book is taken up with um, new ciphers and new ships, schematics and details like that. Different Mm -hmm. setting, not settings, but different um, rules for different settings and time periods for your game. Since space is a, you know, once you get there, you have a vast array of different techs you can unlock. It mostly covers stuff like that. And the setting is just a few pages. Well, not a few. It's, it's quite a few, but the skimmed over the important parts. So it does have a gate ring. Yeah. Hmm. We could play Stargate. Stargate's good. I also had the Stargate RPG. So, But like I said, if I had to play one, I'd probably play the Cypher system and just mod it to fit it with the rules they give me here. The stars are fire. I'll add the affiliate link from Amazon into the description below as well as to some other core information, like you need the core rule book from Cypher System to play this too. And that's about all I have to say about it. Do you have anything to say besides the fact you probably wouldn't play it? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a Twitter called Gruesome Gaming G, and you can follow us there, tweet at us, or zeet at us, or whatever they call it now that's called X. We also have a few other podcasts. One is called Horrific History and Hauntings. Beth, do you want to explain that one? It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Horrific history, things you normally probably wouldn't find in a history book, and hauntings, some true crime. Yeah, we it's another podcast me and my sister here do. Uh, I have another podcast with uh, my friend Dakota. It's where we talk about video games. It's called Leveling Duo. And we talk about the video games that we played when we were younger, or some of the ones we play now, and how they affected our life, made them better usually. A link to all the podcasts to the Gruesome Gaming Groups and Podcast Network into the description of this episode as well. Thank you for listening. I've been Ramey. And I'm Beth. Goodbye.